Last week, we talked about the importance of daily being in God's Word, ingesting the Word of God, reading the Bible each and every day. We talked about our motivation. Our motivation is not um, out of duty. It is out of a hunger or a thirst for God, a, a wanting to know God and know His will for our lives. And we hit on this very practical aspect of having a consistent time, place, and plan in, uh, in place. So we can't just um, uh, say, oh, I'm going to read my Bible without putting a plan in place, finding a time, finding a, a specific uh, uh, area that we're going to spend time in the Word of God. We need to be consistent in that. Now, these weapons of grace that we're talking about, these spiritual disciplines, so to speak, they're not rocket science. This is not some new and improved. Uh, nobody's uh, selling a New York Times bestseller for a, a secret that's been revealed that nobody's come across. No, this is, this is basic Christianity that we as Christians need to follow um, uh, each and every day. I was talking with a, a fellow brother in Christ uh, this past week, and uh, he had mentioned he works at a different ministry. He kind of works with a different ministry here in the Valley, and he works a lot in the prison ministry. And uh, he said, you know, um, he he says one of the things uh, in the jails is, he says, it's easy for these inmates, because they have a lot of time on their hands and stuff like that, they get really zeroed in and focused in on uh, specific areas of the Bible or, or different uh, doctrines and such. And he says, it's interesting, he says, one of the things that really seems to capture the attention of these uh, men that are in, in jail is he says a lot of times has to do with the end times. He says you know, they'll, they'll read a book or they'll hear a video and, and they'll be convinced that Jesus is coming back on certain such and such days and everything like that. And they get so laser focused into that one doctrine. He says, but what happens is, is they, they neglect all the more, uh, perhaps maybe even more important things of scripture by, by uh, showing love and grace and kindness and re being in the word, word of God and, and humbling ourselves. All the spiritual fruit, the fruit of the spirit kind of gets pushed to the wayside. And uh, we as, as uh, we as uh, human beings, we just are naturally, um, we just are kind of uh, drawn to the new, the flashy, the, the, uh, the cool, the you've never heard this before, this top secret thing. Well, that's not what this is. This is, this is basic Christianity, but I feel like this is probably the most important stuff that we need to know each and every day, because these are the areas of life that where the rubber meets the road. This is how we grow in our uh, walk with the Lord Jesus. Jesus Christ. If if God had not given us these weapons of grace, we would be uh, we'd be uh, floundering about in our Christian walk without any direction or uh, a way to know which way forward. So today we're going to look at this area of meditation. Now we talked about the Bible reading and the importance of Bible reading, but if you're like me, um, sometimes our Bible reading can become a little bit on the dry side. Uh, perhaps you've uh, spent time in the Word of God. Perhaps this last week, uh, I think most Christians should be either currently reading Scripture or planning to read one, or you just started one, or wherever you find yourself. And maybe you're, you're going through it and uh, uh, you're reading through the Bible, and maybe you started this past Sunday. If you did, praise the Lord, and maybe you make it through halfway through the week, and you're like, oh, you know, it's... I'm just not really getting a lot out of this, or I'm, I'm struggling to stay focused. And, and uh, perhaps you have found yourself, um, like many Christians, and we, we struggle and, and maybe you find yourself getting distracted or you, you'll read a passage of scripture and not remember even what you read and, and all these things kind of happen um, in your life. Well, uh, it, it's, not that I, it's not that I tricked you last week in the importance of reading the Bible. However, I would say that just reading your Bible is an incomplete uh, incomplete approach to the Word of God. That's what we're going to talk about today. Um, I'll say something in a section. I always find this fascinating because if you study it, it's actually true. There's nowhere in the Bible that commands us to read our Bible every day. You say, what? This is heresy. No, it goes much further than that. We are to study the Word of God. We are to meditate day and night. We are to memorize Scripture but there's nowhere in the Bible that says, hey, just check off the list, read your Bible, then you're good to go. There's really no, but there is many, there are many um, uh, commands in Scripture for us to be continually in the Word of God, allowing the Word of God to dwell in us, being daily uh, meditating on the Word of God. So 
just reading the Bible is going to be inc incomplete when it comes to our approach to the Word of God. And just reading the Bible is never going to build that delight, that joy that comes from the Word of God. Our text of Scripture says that his delight, this blessed man, is in God's law, and in his law he meditates day and night. I'm going to read a, a portion of a few Scriptures, and I want you to ask yourself, is this my approach or is this my view towards the word of God? These are convicting passages because if you read these, you think to yourself, whoa, this is, this is the way I'm supposed to be viewing God's word. And at times it's not like that. Psalm 119, 103 says, how sweet are thy words unto my taste, yea, sweeter than honey to my mouth. Job 23, Job said, I have not gone back from the commandments of his lips. I have esteemed the words of his mouth more than my necessary food. Uh, we live in America. We, we eat far beyond our necessary food to, to sustain life. Uh, imagine, Job says, I, God's word is so important to me. It is more important than the food that sustains my life. I remember a preacher saying, no Bible, no breakfast, no read, no feed. Uh, that's kind of a, a good uh, idea. You know, um, if, you, if you say, I'm not going to take in food until I spend time in the daily bread of the Word of God, uh, that might be a good discipline for us. Uh, but perhaps you're an evening person, then, then do that. I'm, I'm not saying that the morning's better, even though it is. I'm not saying that, okay? Um, but um, uh, Psalm 19 says, More to be desired are they than gold, yea, than much fine gold. Speaking of the law of the Lord, sweeter also than honey in the honeycomb. Again, in Psalm 119, the law, thy law, uh, uh, the law of thy mouth is better to me than thousands of gold and silver. Uh, you think about that. The value that we place upon God's word. Is it value, as valuable as the riches of this world? Um, I know it sounds kind of cliche, but imagine yourself getting get an offer. Here's thousands of pieces of silver or God's word. And sometimes we, we approach it and we're thinking, well, you know, I, I, there's so much I could do with that money. But if we don't have God's word, we're without hope. That It's the foundation for everything we believe. It's a, it will gives us direction and guidance in our life. The way of transgressors is hard. We've seen many people that have been offered the riches of this world. They've taken it and their life is a life of ruin. But the Bible says, blessed, happy, joyous, fulfilled is the person who is daily in the word of God. It's more valuable than gold. It is more valuable than anything in this world. Jeremiah, uh, the, the weeping prophet who uh, continually brought forth the word of God to his people and they rejected it. Many passages of scripture talk about the anguish and the toil that he went through. So much so in Jeremiah 20, uh, he says, God, I, I, you know, I, I cannot do this anymore. I can't do this. I'm not going to speak your words, but his word is in my heart as a burning fire shut up in my bones. I was weary with regret. I could not say. In other words, I tried to quit, but I could not quit because God's word was in my heart. Well, how did it happen? How did he get to that point? He says, thy words were found. I did eat them. Thy word was unto me the joy and rejoicing of my heart. For I called, I am called by thy name, O Lord God of hosts. In other words, he said, I'm, I, I devoured God's word. I delighted in it. And God's word changed my life. Why? Because when I read that word, it's not just written to some random person. It is written to me because I am your covenant child. I am called by your name, O Lord God of hosts. What a wonderful truth. Um, again, all throughout Psalm 119 speaks about the delight, the, the longing for, and the, the love for the word of God. Is that how we approach the Bible? You think about that. The last time you read scripture, is that how you wake up and you think about this is my time to be in God's word? Um, I love uh, Miss Mayu. She can, always comes to me and tells me of the words of scripture that she is memorizing. And if you, know, if you talk to Mrs. Mayu, you know the joy that is in her heart and her mind and her, in her face when she's talking and relaying to you the scripture that God has placed upon her heart. And, and she has passages of scripture that she, she quotes each and every day. And uh, you can see if there's a, uh, if there's a real life uh, example of, of the power of the word of God, uh, and just talk to Mrs. Mayu about the scripture that she, she likes to read and to, to memorize. You know, when I, look at, when I look at my life, um, I was saved later in life. I was saved at 17. And uh, I went through a, um, a season of rebellion and a season of, of kind of um, 
uh, floundering in my faith and, and really not knowing direction where I was going to go. And God, in his providential sovereign grace, uh, allowed me to visit a Bible college as my friend. I've told many of this story before. And God used that in such an influential way that I signed up to go to a Bible college. Um, I, I, remember, I remember talking with my friend, and, and, and the question to me, I said, like, wait, 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 wait. You, you're not allowed to have a TV in your dorm room? I said, oh, wait, what, what kind of rules are these? I mean, when I first stepped on, on the campus of that Christian college, I thought to myself, this is, I can't, how do people live here? How do people, how do people exist in this? This place is just full of rules and regulations and do's and do nots. And you have to wear a suit and tie. Up until that point in my life, I had never, ever worn a suit and tie. And I actually regret ever putting on a suit and tie, but that's another story. The, uh, but, so I was like, you have to wear a suit and tie to go to chapel and church and all these things. And I was like, this is insane. And, and, uh, but God in his sovereign grace, again, began to change my heart and and I was actually only supposed to stay there for a week with my friend in South Carolina. And I remember calling my parents saying, you know, I think I, I, think I want to stay a little bit longer. And uh, so we changed my ticket to, to stay an extra week. And they, they uh, allowed me to stay. They were gracious enough to host me. And uh, something, mad, something uh, beyond uh, spiritual and just, um, uh, I was going to say magical, but uh, uh, the way God works, he began to radically change my heart. And I remember just kind of like uh, saying to my parents, yeah, I thought maybe, maybe, I, should, maybe I should go to Bob Jones University. Maybe, maybe this would be a good opportunity. And, and I, 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 um, I really believe my parents wanted me to do something that, other than where I was kind of the trajectory of my life. So, so I went there and and God used that, you know, that semester that I was at uh, Bob Jones University in such a, a remarkable way. And, uh, and really, it was, it was in that time period where I began to, to read my Bible. And, and it was really at that moment of my life, uh, when I was a young man, I, was, I, I, I think I went to college when I was 19 or 20 years, about, about 19 years old, uh, when I, when I uh, started to understand the importance of the Word of God. And it was at, in, at Bob Jones University where I read and understood, and for the first time, began to realize how important this passage of scripture is because I would read the Bible because we'd hear it in chapel. We'd hear it about the importance of the Bible and we'd read about it and uh, I would read it and I would get distracted. I wouldn't understand what I'm reading. And I read that verse, his delight. And I said, I, I, whatever that man had, I want. I want to love the word of God. I want to, I want to desire the word of God. That, that was my prayer. And God, in his gracious goodness, opened my eyes to the text. And that's where it comes to the Bible. He, he showed me that that delight doesn't just come magically and mystically upon our lives. It's not like some pixie dust of love for God's word. It is through, through the, the weapon of grace, the hard work of grace, to meditate on that very word day and night. Now, when you think of meditation, perhaps your mind immediately goes to the uh, more Eastern uh, New Age uh, um, religion of, of meditation or yoga or something like that. There's a vast difference between the meditation of Scripture and Eastern, um, uh, 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 I would say, uh, heretical uh, uh, meditation. And it comes down to this. The Eastern form of meditation this worldly approach to meditation is an active approach to emptying our minds, to clearing our minds. And what's dangerous is when we empty our minds, whatever, whatever the world wants or whatever uh, uh, Satan wants to enter into our minds, whatever he wants. That's not what scripture meditation is. Scripture meditation is an active filling of our minds with the word of God. Think of that scripture, let the words of Christ dwell in you richly. The idea is taking up residence in your life, filling up your life with the word of God. Uh, Spurgeon want, prayed that he would, he would know God's word so much that he would think Bibline, okay? The idea is that he would, his, be, his, his thought process would be biblical or scriptural in nature because his constant meditation and focus on the word of God. Now, meditation, I don't want to overcomplicate this. Literally, the word meditate has the idea to mutter or speak. 
It literally means, you know, you've heard the, the, the illustration, chewing of the cud. It has the idea of a, a cow or an animal that has multiple stomachs where they, they eat the food, then they regurgitate that food and then eat it again. It sounds disgusting because it is kind of disgusting for us. But that process of eating the word, of, ingesting the word of God, bringing it back to remembrance. The idea is literally to speak and to mutter, to bring back to remembrance those things which we have understood and learned and to speak to ourselves the truth of the word of God. Now, we look at this and we think to ourselves, well, I don't know how to do that. It is the intentional deep thinking on the truths of the word of God for the purpose of of understanding, application, prayer, and joy. It is taking a passage of scripture, and I hate to to say this to us because many of us struggle in this area. The only way to effectively meditate on something throughout the day where it becomes part of our minds is a the discipline of memorizing scripture now how many of you memorizing scripture is not easy how many of you say okay it is i i I will argue that it is harder and harder it's a lot easier these kids i love it in our school they they memorize entire chapters of the bible and they're spouting it out and and right now they're uh, memorizing i believe it is proverbs chapter 15 uh pretty much like the entirety of that book and they they're like sponges they have that no matter where you are though in your christian walk every one of us can memorize something We can take time, write down a passage of scripture and memorize it. Meditation is when we we review the words of God that we've read. We think upon them. We prayerfully apply them to our lives. And we seek to uh, find ways to relate to God and what it means about Jesus. It's asking questions of the text. It is taking the word of God, memorizing it, and thinking upon it throughout the day. Now, Meditation, meditation without memorizing, okay? Uh, If you seek to meditate on the Word of God or think upon the Word of God or uh, dwell on the Word of God day and night as the psalmist did in our text, and you don't memorize, so if you're seeking to meditate, it's going to be incomplete. It's going to be frustrating, okay? But if we actively memorize Scripture, Without meditation, it was, it's utterly useless, okay? Just memorizing verses for the sake of memorizing verses means nothing. You can just say, oh yeah, I have all these verses memorized. But if we don't actively think upon them, but you add those and you marry those two together, you memorize a passage of scripture, and then you seek to meditate on that passage of scripture throughout the day, pray through it, ask God to, to use that word to implant it deep into our hearts and minds, well, what do we do? It begins to renew our minds. As Christians, we're not to be conformed to this world. I'll tell you what, this world is trying all it can to conform us to its world. Uh, There are every avenue that comes into our hearts and minds. Remember, Lot vexed his righteous soul in seeing and hearing of their wicked deeds. I tell our teens, the eye gates to our hearts and our soul are our mind, I mean, our eyes and our ears. Seeing and hearing. Everything in this world is... Everything in this world is designed to pull our hearts and our minds away from God and onto ourselves or to the pleasures of this world. So when we actively resist that and say, I'm not going to be conformed to this world, but I'm going to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. How do we do that? By spending time thinking upon the word of God, meditating on the word of God. We say, well, this seems a little bit, this seems a little bit um, daunting of a task. Quick little Google search. How many verses are in the King James Bible? Anybody want to take a guess? How many verses are in the Bible? 31,102 verses. Get busy now. What if we dedicated one verse a week? One verse a month? How many verses did you memorize last year? If we memorize one verse a month, meditate on it throughout the month, that might be 12 more than we memorized last year. If we ever memorize a verse a day, I mean, a, a verse a week, a verse a day would be awesome if we had that ability to review and to go through it and everything. There's many ways to do this. We can find passages of scripture that say, this is a passage I love. I want this one to be in my heart and mind. I want to memorize a chapter. I want to memorize a verse. That's great. Perhaps 
uh, you're struggling in an area of growing in grace. Um, you know, perhaps uh, uh, we, we want to be more uh, loving, kind, forgiving, or, or whatever it is. And you can, you can uh, look up verses in that topic and study a topic and, and memorize it. Perhaps it's through your Bible reading. Uh, Pastor talked about him journaling through. That's a process we're going to talk about. That's a, that's a weapon of grace as well in our life. As we journal, think, write down, uh, paraphrase what God's Word is saying to us and seek to understand it better. But wherever you find them... There's 31,000 of them there for us to pick. Now, the great thing is the Bible doesn't tell us which ones we have to memorize. The verses you memorize might be different than ones I memorize, but I think we all should be memorizing Scripture. I think we should all be meditating on the Word of God. What if we committed to ourselves to, to at least memorize or meditate on one verse a week? I think we could all do that. Write a verse down, perhaps put it on the lock screen of your phone or do something and uh, seek to meditate. Pray over that verse each and every day, multiple times throughout the day. We talk about walking with the Lord or, uh, you know, praying without ceasing. It's that constant communication. These are, these are all avenues that God wants us to do. Now, I really believe that this weapon of grace and the one we're going to talk about next week are probably... At the, at the highest point of the list where Satan does not want us to accomplish. Satan does not want you to renew your mind according to Scripture. Satan wants you to be infiltrated with the world and what the world has to offer. But can I say that that's a counterfeit and that's a, that's a, bad, uh, it's a, bad, um, a bad deal? What does the text say? They're like chaff, the chaff. Okay, the godly man, the, the man who meditates, this, this blessed, prosperous man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water. They're daily uh, 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 soaking up the truth and the nutrients of the word of God. They have life in them, strength, stability, faithfulness, uh, predictability. Every season brings forth fruit. What is the wicked? They're like chaff. They, they blow away. Uh, read through the book of Ecclesiastes, a life that is, not, uh, is lived a, away from God for the pursuit of this world um, in a generation or two, uh, that person's memory is going to fade. They're not even going to, the world's not even going to remember who they are or what they've done. It's like they are just blown away into uh, the past and nobody is going to care about it. And their life is going to have no anchor, no, no direction, no peace, no joy. That's what Satan wants from us. But what God wants from us is for us, he wants a life that is, is is, is, is rooted in the Word of God and brings forth delight. Now, meditation of Scripture is not something that's going to come easy. It's not going to be overnight. It's not something that we can um, perhaps just flip a switch. But if we will, by God's grace, do this, focus on the Word of God, memorize the Word of God, pray through the Word of God, seek to understand the Word of God, when you do this, God is going to give you a joy and a delight for his word that cannot be explained apart from God's Holy Spirit working in you and taking his sword, the spirit, the word of God, and transforming our hearts and our minds. And that is a wonderful truth. It is a gift that God gives to us. And unfortunately, many of us refuse that gift. May that not be so in our lives. Let's pray.